Welcome to In the Spotlight. I'm Janelle Broderick. And I'm Grace Anastasiavis. We're your hosts for Howard Community College's program, highlighting the art and artists featured in the Horowitz Visual and Performing Arts Center. The Horowitz Center's 2023 spring lineup includes music concerts, film discussions, dance performances, several theater productions, and a number of gallery exhibitions showcasing the work of students, faculty, and guest artists. A full list of events is available online. The dance program is producing their annual Dance Company Concert, opening Thursday, March 30th, and running through Saturday, April 1st. Our guest today is coordinator of dance Liz Higgins, who is the artistic director of the concert and also one of its choreographers. Welcome, Liz. Thank you so much for inviting me today. It's great to have you. It's lovely to have you. Can you tell us about the goals of the annual Dance Company concert? Yes. Um, it's one of my favorite events that we host each year. Uh, it involves faculty, guest artists from our community, and farther reaching. And of course, features our wonderful HCC dance students. We have alumni who've come back and danced with us, a couple of guest artists uh, performing with us also. And it's a really interesting um, show this year in particular because we're usually in Smith, in the Smith Theater, but this year we're gonna be in Studio Theater which is a black box. And the beautiful thing about a black box theater is that you can shape it in whatever way you like. And uh, because we have this theater, I thought we'd do something a little different this year. So we have the audience in arena style seating on all sides. And so there's no particular front for any of the choreography, which really gives a great challenge for the performers and the choreographers to work in this new model with space. Um, so we have been working in January uh, to create these pieces. Some of them are, are restaged works, but they're being recapitulated for this new spatial configuration. And then we have works like my own that is brand new. And um, I'm excited because I'm also collaborating with our music coordinator for the dance program, Ricky Jefferson. He's been creating a score for the piece. So it is very exciting to bring all these people together and try something new. That sounds so fascinating, especially when the dance is in the round, as mm -hmm. we say in the theater, in the round, audiences on all four perspectives. So that's exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about how students can get involved? Yes, we generally hold our auditions during the fall semester. Toward the end of the fall semester, after we finish our dance showcase, we take a breath for a week. <laughs> and then we jump right in and we hold an audition which is open to everyone in the community ages 16 and up. Um, so we actually have a few students who are coming to us from UMBC in the company this time. Uh, and again, some alumni and guests coming in. And then we are also trying something new. My assistant artistic director, Alex J. Krebs, who is an alumni as well, uh, she is going to create these transitional movements that happen between each of the pieces. So the evening's going to feel like one flowing piece that kind of keeps going. That's great. Uh, and that's something new as well that we haven't done before. So it's going to feel more like an evening work rather than a series of pieces, which is more typical of a repertory concert. That's, that's really exciting how it's all kind of pulling together. Can you tell us how that process comes together? I know you work with the choreographers in January. There's residencies. Who are those choreographers, and how do they communicate with, with the, this cohesive idea? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, we try to, I try to find a diverse array of different artists so that the program's interesting, and also so the students get different experiences. You know, each choreographer works in his or her own unique way. Um, some people come in with an idea and develop movement on the dancers, and then other people come in with codified, structured movement phrases and teach them to the dancers and then kind of tweak them. Um, so it's, it's a great learning experience for the dancers who participate to be able to experience these different modes of, of development in, in, the, in the studio. So on this concert, uh, both full-time faculty members, myself and Darian Smith, have works. He is restaging something that he worked on a few years back that unfortunately never got performed due to COVID. So it's wonderful to bring the piece back and finally put it before a live audience. Um, 
And then, like I had mentioned, I'm, I'm creating something new for the dancers. Uh, then we have Liz Quinones, who comes to us from Kinetics Dance Theater. She's the artistic director, and she is restaging a work that she had created a few years back about immigration. And now she has the opportunity to revisit it with new dancers and try out this 360 degree approach to the same choreography. So she's excited. Uh, and it's, it's funny how well the piece is working in this new spatial configuration without her even having to make a lot of changes to the choreography. Um, then we also have Ryan Bailey with us who is locally based as well. Uh, he was working up in New York City for a while, but he, lucky for us, he's back in our Maryland dance community and he is creating something new on the dancers. And the fifth piece in the program is being choreographed by Ama and Chris Law of Project Karma. Uh, they're also locally based. Ama's now on faculty at American University on their dance faculty. Um, and they have worked with the HCC community quite a bit. We love bringing them back. And their recapitulating piece they had started a few years ago for our company that once again did not get performed due to COVID. So they're taking that idea, that concept. They have a different number of dancers this time, but it's a socio-political work. Um, they're exploring themes of uh, identity and oppression, and um, but in a very fun and dynamic and exciting movement-based uh, way of approaching some you know, heavier themes and topics. So it's it's going to be a really diverse and exciting program, and the dancers are having a ball. They're having a great time in the studio. They've been working hard throughout the whole month of January, so I'm really proud of them. And we're getting closer to finishing all the material before we kind of start putting it together and seeing what the entire vision is going to look like. I know you spoke a little bit to a couple of the pieces and their significance. Are there other pieces that you would like to highlight in terms of significance or topic? Yes, I think there are a couple pieces that are really delving into uh, themes regarding oppression and identity, um, similar to Am and Chris, but different, different realms. For example, Liz Quinones' piece uh, is exploring themes of migration and immigration and a uh, sense of home and what home means for different people. Um, you know, artists, particularly in dance, can take a topic and they can either keep it a little bit more literal, uh, sometimes incorporating text or sound layer into the sound score, you know, text in the sound score itself. And then other artists take an idea, and even though it's the inspiration for the piece, they take a much more abstract approach to it in their choreography. So the audience may not know exactly what that original intention was, but they kind of get that sense or emotion or response to the movement and the way the dancers are interacting with each other in their, you know, I would say my piece kind of leans in that direction, a little bit more abstract. Uh, over Under is the working title, and it's going to be part of uh, a larger work that I'm going to be presenting this summer in Baltimore. Um, so I'm kind of exploring some ideas in this first iteration of the work, which is lovely to have the opportunity to, to see you know, what reads before an audience when you try to express something. Um, so Over Under is, is also indicating how power structures are revealed, you know, through space also, and thinking about when we connect with people and have these interactions, um, what that means, and how it it reads. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, I have a follow-up question in terms of style, dance style. What mm -hmm. would an audience member expect to see on stage from all of these amazing works? Uh, glad you asked that question. There are always um, such unique voices when you bring these amazing artists together. And one of the things I love about our community at HCC is its diversity. And we try to reflect that in the dance program and you know, include as many different styles and voices as we can. Um, generally, we kind of lived in, in, live in this contemporary dance realm, I would say, um, but Darian Smith, one of our full-time faculty members, you know, has an expertise in ballet, so you're certainly going to see some ballet technique reflected in his work. 
Um, Ama and Chris uh, have a lot of hip hop and West African influencing their work that they fuse together and integrate with contemporary modern dance. Um, I myself have studied and danced in so many different contemporary modern dance styles that I'm fusing all of that together with my own aesthetic. Um, Liz Quinones, I know she explored a lot of different um, methodologies when she was at Hollins University doing her MFA in dance and um, you know some experimental ideas. She's incorporating some text in her work. Uh, Ryan Bailey also has a diverse background and his, his I know his approach to work um, is very improvisational where he'll create movement in the moment and the dancers he, he doesn't do a lot of speaking in his process. It's really movement-based and very sentient, and the dancers kind of absorb what they're seeing and feeling and reflecting back what it is that he's doing. So we really have a very wide range of process, you know, approach to the process, as well as the actual movement that comes as a result of the process. And what is the hope for the takeaway for the students. You're giving them this opportunity to learn not only from HCC faculty, but also from guest artists. What is what is it that you uh, hope that they take away from the experience? There are a few things that I, I try to, a few objectives that I'm focusing on in this model. Um, generally, I want them to have the experience of being in a professional company. For students who are interested in going on and having a performing career, which we do have some who are wanting to take that path, uh, or if they eventually have their own dance studios or become teachers, understanding what that professional uh, environment is like and what the expectations are and how we can be really focused about the work while having a good time. Um, I also want them, if they're interested in choreography, to experience the different ways that choreography can be created, that it's not always, you know, five, six, seven, eight, you come in with a phrase and you just learn it that it's a reciprocal process, that there's collaboration going on, um, that who you are as an artist can inform the work. Um, and then a collaboration is critical. You know, learning how to work with other people, be supportive to, you know, do your part, help others who are struggling, you know, that as a group, we do much better if we are all stronger, right? We're a company, it's not a series of individuals and, you know, teaching them how to support each other constructively um, rather than competitively. Speaking on that, how do you ensure that our dancer students and alumni and guests uh, remain healthy in their bodies while this process is going on? Very important. It is very important for dancers to take care of themselves, not just while they're in the studio, but while they're outside the studio. So I always find this a wonderful time to give my students permission to take care of themselves, right? Uh, a lot of them have jobs, uh, some of them have children. I mean, you know, they have very busy, responsible lives. So reminding them that getting proper rest, drinking enough water, eating properly, you know, giving yourself enough downtime is part of your job. So you're gonna do a better job if you're in a better place and you're taking care of yourself. And it's kind of nice for them to have a good excuse to finally do that for themselves. Yeah. And that's part of being a professional, right? Because if you don't understand how to balance your life and then you get sick or you're too exhausted or you're injured, you can't participate. So the better able you are to, you know, we can't control everything, but the more we can kind of take care of ourselves, this is your instrument. The dancers have to understand their body is their instrument. So if it's not fine tuned, it's not going to work as well for them. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share for our viewers to know? I think that dance is such a powerful, beautiful language because it is universal. There is movement all over the world while people move in different ways and to different styles of music uh, for different reasons. Some people do it as part of their culture. Some people do it in a performative way. but it is something that communicates to everyone. And even if you don't necessarily enjoy dancing yourself, it's usually very exciting to watch others dance and you can kind of feel their energy when you watch them perform. So I love sharing it with the community. 
And so I'm always excited to have people come see our performances because I think they're going to walk away feeling enriched. So I highly encourage people to engage in dance in any way that you can. Well, we love coming. We sure do. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I greatly appreciate all the support you've always given us. And I hope that you're able to come and share this experience with us. It'll be new. It's a bit of an experiment. I'm excited and scared. But, you know, I feel like the arts is about taking risks so that we can keep moving forward and innovating. So I'm also excited to hear people's feedback on this new model and see what they think. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been wonderful to chat. Thank you. For more information on our Dance Company concert and other dance program events, please visit us at howardcc.edu slash danceconcerts and follow us on Facebook. Thanks for joining us for this segment of In the Spotlight. See you next time.